Hi okay, guys and welcome back once again to the Remote Duel Invitational in Europe, the first of 2021. It's, uh, it's been a long day already and we are uh, gonna find out now one of the last matches for the day. We have three more to go for our top 16 direct elimination and we want to find out who is gonna advance to tomorrow for the rest of the top eight. Again, we are gonna have a pretty interesting pairing with two brand new decks that we have not seen this weekend. It will be Christian with... Uh, I'm not gonna spoil it actually, we're gonna listen to him himself against Wagner, Sven Ole. So both using uh, what we could consider technically the opposite approach of what we have just witnessed with all of the guys going for a, a trap heavy deck uh, countering uh, um, the virtual world. This guy took it the opposite. They thought, okay, you are the combo deck. No, we are the combo deck. We are going to show you what we do, but let's hear it from them and let's listen to the first of the interviews. I'm involved in Yu-Gi-Oh! chain card game uh, since 2013 when I have uh, nine, when I was uh, nine years old. Uh, my first competitive deck is ABC, but first deck that I played is um, Cyber Dragon Structure deck. My favorite card is Sky Striker Mobilize Engage. I play Phantom Knights because I think that deck is consistent and I can play so much hand trap and doesn't break. Uh, my fondest memory is uh, when I top regional in Bosnia with Sky Striker. Good, good memories, uh, of course. And uh, as you mentioned, uh, he's playing uh, the deck we spoiled you guys for. It's Burning Abyss, uh, but it's actually Phantom Knights, let's say. It only plays a couple of Burning Abyss cards, but the focus on the deck uh, relies on the Phantom Knights uh, core, although he can use the Cherubini easily with any two level threes, and that way able to combo off uh, and put up some pretty impressive boards. But his opponent is even more of a combo deck, so let's hear it from Sven Ole. I have been involved with Yu-Gi-Oh! for a very long time, for at least 10 years. Uh, the first deck I played was the first structure deck with arm dragons and stuff. Uh, my favorite card is Debris Dragon. I'm playing Dragon Link, because <laughs> I like dragons, and it's, I just like playing the deck. And I think it's very strong. My fondest memories are traveling to events like YCSs with my friends and just having great weekends. Okay, makes sense. And again, he told you guys it's the first Dragon Link deck we have seen this weekend. It is the current winner because uh, the last remote duel we had it was won by Matteo. So he's trying his best months after the last event, uh, still uh, being out there and winning, uh, winning the event. But uh, among the two of them, which do you think will have the advantage? I think the Dragon League deck is very combo-based deck, and we've seen a lot of deck being played in the past format. I will pick Dragon Link, but I don't want to say anything because every single time I pick a deck... Uh, yeah, it, it doesn't work <laughs> uh, well. <laughs> so let's hope it will not be the case so for Sven, of course. But uh, now, enough with the talk. It's gonna be an explosive combo mirror match, although combo, but different decks. So let's go to the table if our players are ready. Okay, so here they are. Uh, I gotta say, uh, they, they are similar in theory, but different uh, in the way they are built. Uh, Sven is playing uh, a lot of hand traps, although it's a combo deck, while his opponent is playing 49 cards, so not the most usual one, but they are also playing uh, like 12 hand traps each. So it's, uh, it's true that they are combo decks, but they still can afford uh, uh, 12 hand traps, because uh, the combos are usually two cards. Yeah. So. And here, uh, do you think you want to win the dice roll, right? Absolutely. Because, uh, like the Dragon yeah. League, you really want to start things off. Yeah, absolutely. Same for Phantom Knights. He can put up uh, easily uh, a lot of negations, uh, especially because we saw uh, the uh, yeah, we saw some combos that he can do with the Rusty Bardish after he came back. So it's uh, it's definitely something I'm I'm more curious about because we all know how the Dragon League deck works. Well, this is something more unusual. 
So let's see. And he, and he did win the Dyro. So yeah. a big, uh, big payoff uh, from Christian. Uh, okay, start things off with Torn Okay, Steel. nice. And the Kajimusha. Yeah. So this is already good enough. As long as you have two level threes. Uh, wow, this is an incredible opening. So this is one of the new Phantom Knights cards. Uh, and I will uh, try to bring it up for you guys uh, on the screen. Uh, in a few moments, it allows you to discard, uh, as in this case, and send another Phantom Knight card from the deck. And it's very good because it gives you a lot of access, as easy access to you know your key cards and uh, combo off. And I think Sven here was not expecting a deck like this to be faced and will be played in this tournament, but uh, here it is. And uh, Christian is now combo off with his cards and uh, makes the Carabini, and he sends the Graph. Now Graph is being activated, and uh, I'm very happy to see Burning Abyss Phantom Knights being played in 2021 still. It's very cool to see this deck. It's always here. He never left. Yeah, absolutely. It's one of the <laughs> most unique decks in the in a way that it has been around for so so long, and uh, Kerubini is just probably one of the of the strongest uh, link monsters uh, that we have uh, out there, so yeah. it's pretty much a battle between uh, Kerubini and uh, uh, and the Christian as well here. So we will see which one will prevail. But for now, uh, it doesn't seem like Sven is interested in interacting with his opponent. Uh, we'll uh, we'll see if he has one of the end traps. Uh, Lancea is uh, decent, uh, but he should have used it earlier, I would say. Yeah. So. And now comes the Rusty Bardish, and uh, I think if Christian can put up like a couple of uh, Fog Blades, that will be very good because uh, his opponent is playing Dragon Links, and uh, they're very useful against the Dragon Link deck. So now he's continuing to send uh, his Phantom Knight cards to the, to the, to the graveyard, and uh, he will have an easy access to all of his key cards. Here comes the first Fog Blade. Yeah, so. This is what we used to see back uh, when Rusty was one of the most popular cards. Uh, it was played in combination with uh, Eros uh, and with a lot of different 60 card decks. Uh, uh, we like you usually start things off with an old uh, and then uh, go to the Rusty Bartish, setting up a couple of Phantom Knights uh, uh, traps, so fog blades usually. It's uh, it's definitely uh, cool to see how it is gonna perform after. A while uh, coming back from the forbidden and limited list. So now he has the boots, and uh, I think uh, Christian could have asked for more because uh, his end is really good. And now Dornscale comes back. Yeah. Do you think uh, if uh, you have Nibiru and your Sven, uh, uh, you're just waiting uh, for the last uh, possible opportunity, or? I mean, if he knows the Phantom Knight. Bring a beast deck very well. Maybe you just wait the right moment to activate the Nibiru, but otherwise, I mean, you will have a lot of trouble. So, uh -huh. I think right now, maybe if he has this Nibiru, you should activate it, but it uh, doesn't seem he has uh, one cob in his end. No, I agree, and uh, the ending board is also quite risky because there is a Polusa in the de deck uh, for Christian, so depending on his opening, he can end on a Polusa and uh, if summon it at the right time, then it can shut down the Nibiru as well. It doesn't look like Sven has the Nibiru, because uh, Christian is continuing to combo off. Yeah, this time uh, uh, summoning uh, even more of his Link Master with the Preda Plant Anaconda. And now comes the... Uh, yeah, the Break Sword, the which he's gonna use on his own. Uh, destroying it uh, for the Rusty Bardish second effect, this way he can bring back two. They are their level uh, uh, higher, so you can go for uh, rank four. So this is uh, an incredible show of uh, uh, of how you know a deck uh, well. I'm surprised that they, 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 he's not even thinking about it. He knows what he's supposed to be doing, and he's uh, having no doubts whatsoever on the play. And now he can get to search uh, his deck for the Phantom Knights rank up Magic Force, uh, upgrading. Uh, or okay, maybe, yeah. Okay, no, maybe he has it already. It. Yeah. Yeah. He's Let's see. Showcasing us the power, the power of this deck, because uh, he doesn't even have to think about his moves, because he, he knows everything at perfection. But maybe here, mm -hmm. okay, he has the rank up. 
Yeah, as uh, I expected. Okay, okay. again. <laughs> again, the baiting. Uh, yeah, the rank up is there. Okay. Let's see if he will uh, if he will use it uh, right away. He has a few options in his actual deck. The ending goal is not quite clear. It could be the Ark Rebellion. It could be the Raiders Knight. So it's it's a lot of different options. Uh, and uh, again, the Dragoon uh, is also in his deck uh, because of uh, some of his uh, of his options. So it's it's definitely an interesting deck. Not the most uh, linear, but seems like it's working out quite well. And this was with. Uh, Normal opening, I would say. Yeah, Just two level monsters. threes and uh, yeah. I think uh, I mean yeah. With this, the, the, the cool thing about this deck is that uh, you can open up with different cards and uh, combo off depending on what your opponent has. Like for example, this this van had some kind of interruption maybe here. Uh, Christian would have summoned something different, but. Um, right now things are really looking good for him. Maybe just some clarification because. Uh, here he had the rank up, and um, anyway, I think Sven is going to have a, a tough time against this deck because uh, he was maybe expecting to play against the starter decks of this format. Yeah, you you can definitely see in this uh, scenario a case in which uh, Sven just picks up his cards uh, depending on the final board uh, and prevent the information because if you know you're not gonna break the board, they might as well just uh, just pick it up. Uh. <clears throat> so, for now we can uh, quickly go back to us while they discuss uh, the procedure. Uh, right now we have our judges, always on focus. So, as uh, as mentioned, we saw on camera that there was a little bit of an hesitation uh, from Sven uh, in his play. He initially, uh, from, uh, sorry, his opponent, uh, he initially added the uh, fog blade, it seemed. Uh, so the confusion is probably whether he, he declared uh, that he was gonna get Fogblade, but then changed uh, his mind. Uh, in that case, unfortunately, he, he will be forced to pick the Fogblade, uh, which is not the end of the world, yeah. but of course, if you had in mind a different play, he still uh, should have paid more attention to uh, what he was doing. But it's also quite possible that he was still thinking about it. So we will see how the judges rule it. Uh, either way, I'm sure it will be uh, the correct uh, uh, decision. Um, meanwhile, I just want to remind you guys uh, uh, to check out uh, the website page uh, because you can always see such events like the one we are doing uh, today. But seems like the decision was taken from the judges, so we can resume back to the match. And here it looks like uh, maybe Christian added the rank up, okay. and now he's using the Predator Plant. And uh, doesn't seem like Sven doesn't have any kind of response to that. Okay, and he gets the Red Dice Fusion, and right now Christian yeah, uh, is, is going uh, to have an incredible kill. This is the, the dream scenario. Things are really looking good for Christian, who is now being able to summon the Red Dice Dark Dragoon. What a feel. Now he sets another spell of trap card. And I think it will maybe finish his turn right now. So as you said before, maybe Sven here uh, needs, to needs to consider if he wants to pick up his card without revealing what he's playing to his opponent, because uh, he has to face quite a, quite a lot of different problems, such as Fog Blade, Red Dice, Dark Dragoon. It's not easy. So if he if he if he feels like it's better to move into game two in order to prevent your opponent yeah. to know the deck, maybe this is quite tough. Uh, yeah. As you can see, deck played uh, really well, uh, knowing what he's uh, up against. Even though he had to add the okay, but it doesn't feel like this is enough. So he's gonna start things off with uh, what's probably one of the best cards yeah. in the deck. Uh, the Gauss Zone, which allows you to search for the Wyvern Buster or the Collapse Serpent, depending on what you discard. Plus the Abs uh, Road Fur, which is the, the actual best possible opening. Ooh, but the Lancia is discarded. Yeah. So even an additional layer of uh, negation, and this time uh, Sven uh, probably could have picked up his card if he knew about the Lancia. Yeah. Yeah. This is gonna be tough. Although his opening was probably the 
perfect one because if you have uh, those two cars together, as you can see here, not only do you get the Wyver, but you get the to add a, a, a card as well from the deck. Uh, it's uh, it's tough. It's very uh, unfortunate for Sven. Yeah. And the Lancia, which is there for Virtual World mainly, comes back to Aunt uh, Sven uh, because it's annoying against this deck too. And let's now see if Sven can come back into this tough game, because uh, with Lancia he's gonna get a lot of problems. So... Yeah, because the Phantom Knight's uh, traps are there too, yeah. so... And he picks up this card. Yeah, unfortunately he picks up this card, so uh, tough to say. I would be interested to, to see if uh, without the Lancia Sven really could have managed to break this board. I am doubtful about it. But the end was promising, so maybe he had a chance, maybe he had a Levianir, which was also shut down by the Lancia. Regardless, Christian played it uh, fantastic, so showed us why his unique deck uh, is doing uh, well and uh, allowed him to qualify for this event. And now he has a big advantage going into the side deck because he also knows about his opponent deck. What do you think he is going to bring in? So now Christian, uh, well, He's playing against the Dragonlin because Sven Red Lilith's deck, so maybe he could set in the evenly match, which is, I think, a very good card against this matchup. And rather than that, I think uh, you don't really... maybe the Drone Lock. Yeah, Droll, the Droll, Droll is good. Yeah. Droll is uh, surely good. Uh, it does uh, depend a lot on the end. There are some ends in which uh, it doesn't do anything, there are some ends in which it's game winning, as it would have been here with this specific open from Sven. But honestly, it's still probably worth uh, playing, uh, especially when uh, um, Christian is playing 49 cars, so he doesn't have the best consistency with Entrops. Uh, on the other side, those when uh, probably doesn't want to side too much because he's going first, uh, and he saw that it's a combo deck he's facing, uh, but he might uh, change a few things. Uh, what do you think? It's very tough because, uh, I don't know, maybe because I think he's going first, so... He doesn't want to to put in the Nibiru. Uh, the draw the lock, I don't think we will see the draw the lock board being played by Sven. No, it could change a few hand yeah, traps. Uh, maybe change to the Schoolmeister, which are pretty useful against every deck uh, in uh, in his opponent. Uh, and also, he might change the way that his deck uh, performs uh, uh, in the first turn. Usually, you would see an ending board uh, uh, with uh, just relying on uh, different synchros and XYZs. But this time, uh, when he ends with the Erratic Spheres, uh, he can also side in uh, this card we are going to show you guys in a moment, uh, which is Quakimeru Drago, which is uh, a phenomenal tool because uh, he doesn't allow special summon of uh, light and darks, uh, meaning uh, Christian deck is essentially <laughs> gone. But uh, I'm sure he will uh, bring that in. And I, I wouldn't mind seeing uh, the Kwakimeru combo uh, comes, uh, comes in, come, yeah, in clutch. Yeah. <laughs> so let's see. He, he doesn't need much to combo off, yeah. but uh, he's up against a lot of end traps. So let's see. Yeah, Christian plays a lot of end traps. And uh, yeah, he has the Gamma, he has Ash Blossom, which is very good. He has the Nibiru as well. Yeah, Nibiru, we saw the Lancia in game one. So let's see. So the first card from Sven is uh, okay. This is a tracer. And we have seen this deck a lot during our uh, last remote duel invitational held in October. And now we will see hopefully the standard Dragon League combo with the Strider Dragon. Mm -hmm. And uh, let's see if Christian has any response to that. He has the Lancia. It's a Lancia again. Okay. okay, annoying for sure, but again. Not the end of the world, depending on Sven end. So, at the end of the day, there are a few cards which are obviously important, uh, but uh, if you don't see the cow space, uh, you don't have access to the Wyvern Buster, so maybe it's not as uh, as bad. Yeah. So, Sven unfortunately drew the book set to a launch, mm -hmm. and. Uh... Let's see now if he can go on with the combo. Yeah, he can use the Tracer to destroy it. Uh, uh, and in that case, I mean, worst case scenario, maybe he can just end uh, on a Eratic Seal uh, bringing uh, the Kokimeru Drago. Yeah. Maybe he feels safe enough with that. Uh, I'm pretty sure it would guarantee him another turn. Uh, 
Right, let's see. Yeah, as expected, the Tracer comes down. Uh, he has the option uh, to go even just for a pretty sad uh, Synchro Summon. Uh, it might be the case, but I think... Mm, let's see. Yeah, it's not easy, because here maybe... Maybe you go for the Yaratic Seal, but... Yeah, because uh, now you're locked okay, under Dark yeah. as well, uh, if you use it. So that's yeah. a problem. You're locked under oh. Dark and the Nibiru. Mm -hmm. Wow, which is exactly right because it I was, think, uh, was the... one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, wow. wow. Yeah, and the sixth uh, when he summons. So yeah, that's uh, that's the perfect Nibiru to chain because afterwards you can use it to negate uh, with the Savage. And now Sven uh, must feel uh, devastated. Uh, so it seems like Christian prepared really well. And again, uh, the opening uh, with the new Phantom Knights. Uh, uh, yeah, Torn Scales. So, wow. wow, same same thing as uh, as before. Does he have another one? He does. This is tough. Uh, Sven really needs a way to deal with this. Uh, and if he doesn't have any hand trap, uh, this will be pretty much an easy game for Christian. Yeah, Christian needs to consider that uh, the game is not over yet. So maybe Sven uh, would have side in the Nibiru by the opti, because yeah. he first, you know? So maybe... Here is the Cherubini, most likely. Yeah. He will send the graph uh, and the seer just like before. So we, we're pretty much seeing uh, whatever we saw before, but while the priority was to set up the most interruptions possible, here the priority is to OTK. Yeah. Uh, so I'm sure the Christian will uh, will try his best to do so. Yeah, as expected. Now we're gonna see the Rusty, Bardish, and. Uh, the Seer will bring back the Cherubini. Yeah, no surprise here, he's continuing to make the same combo as he did in the first game. Mm -hmm. There comes the Cherubini back and uh, yeah, now comes the Rusty Bartish. Incredible, incredible, uh, incredible things here. Maybe he's counting uh, how many summons uh, he had. Yeah, I think here maybe if Sven doesn't have the Nibiru, he needs to bluff it, you know? Yeah, of course, you have to try and bluff it, but I mean, uh, it's not like your opponent uh, is already committed. So exactly. once you're committed, it doesn't make sense to, to do less than you could. So He takes the Fog Blade and uh, he sends the, the Globes to the graveyard. And uh, it's going to be very tough for Sven, because it looks like he doesn't have Angers yeah. to the at the same time, it's always interesting to uh, remind everyone watching uh, that the bracket uh, is already uh, public, so the uh, the opponents uh, are watching as well. And, uh, I think uh, anyone watching would be afraid of what Christian's deck is able to do, because it isn't uh, among uh, the expected ones. Uh, but honestly, he's showing he's confident with it, not really having doubts while comboing off. Uh, and at the same time, performing quite well with uh, negations, uh, interruptions, uh, damage. So pretty much a full circle all yeah, around. It's very scary because with only two cards, he's actually able to put up a huge field and it's very difficult to deal with it. So right now, maybe he wants to seal the Is game. Is it an Apollosa here? No. Yes. Yes, this is an Apollo. Yeah, this is the alternative. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is. Okay, so now Nibiru is not even an option. I was thinking about it. I was like, maybe he just goes for it and plays around the the, the possibility of, uh, of a Nibiru just changing the game. And this is tough. Because yeah. now Apollosa, sure, it's a great way to deal with Nibiru, but it's just a, a phenomenal card. Like, three negations, uh, uh, no matter what, are way too much for Sven to deal with. Yeah, I think he did the right way because you don't, you don't really want to lose this game to Nibiru. And uh, although although Steven de Sven decided to go first, uh, anyway he would have decided to bring them in. So Apollosa is the safest one at this spot. And uh, now he brings back the Torn Scale because it's not done yet. So maybe we will see another XYZ summon very soon. Mm -hmm. And I think uh, uh, the main difference between everyone uh, 
uh, deck uh, back at the last remote duel and Matteo, the winner, was the Apollosa. He was the only one playing it back in the day and it really showed because uh, uh, whenever he could summon it, he did and it really cost him, uh, uh, allowed him to just win the entire event. This is, seems to be the same and now the Braxworths destroyed the token. He's gonna bring back two level fours just like before and uh, it seems like uh, this will be more than enough to just win the game once more so i am uh, i'm definitely impressed by what christian is uh, is showing us uh, yeah, which is and... incredible with only two cards if you consider because he started with the ton scale and the kajimusha so with only two cards it's an otk pretty much so i think he, he just needs to make some calculation here before getting into the battle phase he wants to be sure that uh, it will be enough yeah just do some mats here. And uh, I think he's, he's activating the the boss in the graveyard. Okay, he gets the, the, the Brigadin. Yeah, he's, uh, he's doing uh, everything uh, pretty flawlessly. And uh, again, here you can see, even though it's the different artwork, you can see on the screen uh, the MVP of this match for Christian. The Apollosa just uh, putting in so much work and allowing him to play without being afraid of uh, a potential interruption. So, great show of, uh, of knowledge by, by this player. Yeah, very well played by Christian. Again, another summon, and I think uh, this will be more than enough because it allows him to attack uh, even more. So let's see if uh, if Sven uh, can find uh, a miracle because uh, now the, the fusion uh, comes up, uh, and uh, here you can see just uh, how many tools this deck is hiding. Uh, the Dragoon uh, having even another interruption. So four interruptions going second against Dragon Link. This is something you rarely, rarely see. He's gonna move to the battle phase uh, and Sven uh, just picks up his card. So Christian is the winner. He moves on with a 2-0 record to the top eight. Uh, what a match. Great match again. Uh, probably one of the most unique ones we can uh, uh, we, we saw in the previous two matches uh, uh, players taking a conservative approach and bringing decks like Paleo and Alter guys full of traps uh, and trying to control the field. Now we see the opposite. Yeah, I mean, I was not expecting this deck doing so much with only two cards. Basically. And just think about that from Monday, you have three rusty. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's uh, it's just uh, <laughs> yeah. more and more advantage. So I, I think uh, this, this was really a good show of why you should shouldn't uh, be uh, okay with what you already have and you should try and find for ways uh, to make your deck better and work it. I know a lot of people might be skeptic about the 49 as a number but I think uh, uh, it just proved uh, to you guys why is that deck is performing so well and if he feels like that's the correct number then it's up to him to prove it. And uh, he is now moved on to the top eight, so we can show you guys the updated bracket for the event with just one more match in the top eight to be decided. So, as you can see, uh, the first uh, match of the other side of the bracket is going to be the one between Donovan Leblanche playing uh, the uh, Eldlick with Dragoon up against yet another deck with Dragoon. So this is the third deck in a row with Dragoons advancing so Christian uh, really really putting up some good work and I'm sure that would be a match to remember but now as you can see on the screen there are only two more matches remaining for today the one coming up next will be the one between Marco Sanchez and Alexander uh, Sokolovic so keep sure and make sure that you keep on watching tell your friends already if they are not here to join uh, and remain for the last two matches of today. Guys, thank you for watching, and we will be back soon with round seven.